Hello everyone. One day I will remember to bring my tripod up here so that I'm not having to balance you for these videos. But I wanted to share a little bit of how I have been using my weekly LBD planner so far this year. We have designed this planner to be as versatile as possible. So you will see as I go through the video today when I talk through my planner, that I am using my planner in some very unconventional ways and maybe ways that you may not have thought of using it yourself. But my goal is always to allow space in your planner to change things to work best in your home and in your family circumstances. And I acknowledge that we're all so different that setting it out really specifically means that it removes the ability for you to be able to make this planner work as best that it can for you. So I'm gonna run through some of the features of it and how I have been using it. One of the first things in the weekly planner is the zone cleaning page. Now, just remember this will be mirrored for you. That's how the camera on the iPhone records and my updates still won't let me swap it around. So I have my zone cleaning page right at the front of the planner. That is where I choose what rooms I'm focusing in our home each day for the year. And uh, if you're going to be changing it up, maybe try using pencil. If you want to learn more about zone cleaning, there are separate posts about that. And of course I can always do a video of it, uh, but I have my zone cleaning schedule there so that I can look at, for example, today is Friday. It might be different days as I record this video, uh, but on a Friday, our zones for the day are our car and the garage. So in the back of my mind, I know that sometime today, I would like to spend a little bit of time just emptying out the car after a busy week of school drop-offs and pickups. And uh, if there's anything in the garage that needs to be done, then that will be my focus today as well. Over behind the zone cleaning page is this page, which is a notes and idea page. It's right at the front of the planner. And so I actually use this page at the start of the year to set out some big goals for 2021. And I shared in the project that I, we were at a little bit of a crossroad because there were two different directions that we may go as a family. We are now very clear on the direction that we are going, but on January 1st, it wasn't clear to us yet. And so I put two different scenarios on that page there, and I looked at each scenario and what we wanted to achieve working through that. So I actually just used this notes and idea page at the front of the planner to do my bigger goals. Of course, then we have our monthly goal planning pages, which I love. They're always on a tab page. You can go to them and find them really Really easily and uh, I happen to goal set in each of the six areas but you do not have to remember that this planner is not there to overwhelm you it's not there to create extra work for you or for you to feel like you need to be doing more it is there to motivate and inspire you and so if, when you write your goals if you feel defeated by them before you've even started I would pull it right back and just start with one goal maybe pick one area that you're going to work on and then build up slowly from there what we want to create is positive habits, not overwhelm. I'm sure we have enough of that in our lives already. All right, over from the goal page is our monthly overview pages. Now I have used these for different reasons each month. So in January, I used it to make note of when project 14 was and what was on each day. So that's from January 1st to January 14th. It takes up half of my January and it is a critical part of January for us. It's one of the most important things in January in our home. And then we were also going to be away a little bit. So we did project 14 from the 1st to the 14th and then we went away from the 15th to the 20th. And on the 21st, I started back uh, at a student free day for our school. So the whole of January just mapped out what was happening each day. Project 14, like I said, 1st to 14th. Then after that, where we were going to be when we traveled for that bit over a week, I think it was. And then I went back to school. So in January, that is how I use my monthly overview. But if I flip to February, I actually set myself a challenge in February and it's still ongoing to think of different ways that I could use the cash wallet and different things that I could use it for. And so I made it my goal every single day to think of another thing that I could use the cash wallet for because I am wanting to put a video together. It has been requested that I share more about the cash wallet. And so every day I make it my goal to write down one other reason that I may use my cash wallet so that by the end of February, I have a whole list of things that I can film for you 
and hopefully I make it a more beneficial video to watch. So that's how I used my February overview, just every day thinking about different places I could use my cash wallet. So things like uh, the ice cream truck, the markets, tuck shop if you're writing it out and putting it in a brown bag. And then on the right hand side of my February overview, I have thought about ways you could use the cash wallet without cash. So uh, labeling bank cards, using the different sections to hold receipts while you calculate how much you've used in each area. And I'm challenging myself to think about as many ways that you can use a cash wallet with no cash as well. So that's how I'm using my February overview. Now for you, you might use it to track appointments or birthdays, different things. We try and make it as versatile as possible. The other thing that I have been using differently to other people is that I have been using the weekly planning pages. So these are the pages that typically would be your meal planning pages. So you would write out what you're eating on Monday and Tuesday, etc. I have used them to encourage myself every day to write a positive affirmation. So when I start the day, I think about a positive affirmation that I can write and um, they are different every day and they're there to help reframe my mindset and help me to focus on good. So um, I'll read out some of the affirmations I had for one of the weeks in January. I am focusing on the areas of my life that I have control of. Every day I work to make the day the best I know how to. I know that what doesn't make sense right now will make sense to me in the future. When faced with the challenge, I trust that one small step at a time will get me to where I need to be. I am patient with myself while I learn the lessons that I need to learn. I am proud to put my own needs at the top of my priority list. I am going to make today the best I know how to. So every day I just thought about whatever situation I was going through and I have the date. So this was the 4th of January, the 5th of January, the 6th of January. And I don't get these online. I just think about what it is that I need right now. And I write them down for myself. So that is what I've been using the weekly plan section of the planner for where a lot of people typically may be using that for their after school commitments. They may be using it for um, what are some reasons? Meals, like I said. If I turn over the page again, here is another notes and idea page. There are heaps of notes and idea pages through the weekly planner. If you like to have blank pages with lines just for brain dumps or to keep a record of different things, there are plenty in our weekly planner. So I just turned to this page and uh, I used this one to map out my week. So I sat down one day and I intentionally thought of where I was at different times and how I could better map out my week to be um, as efficient with my time as possible. And that's how I used one of the pages. Now, as I go through the planner, I know that just the other day, if I turn to February, I used one of the notes and idea pages. Let me just find it to write out my list of 14 things that I love about Tim. I do this at Val for Valentine's Day every year for Tim and for both the boys. I write down 14 things that I love about them. And I have my planner with me quite often and the other day I had a bit of time and one of my February goals was to write out the list of 14 things for Tim and for both of the boys. So while I had time, I used the notes and idea page to write out 14 things that I love about Tim and I went over the other page too because I had I had a spare page. So you can see how these notes and idea pages are used for so many different things, just whatever I need at the time and they're all in the planner. So when I'm looking for this to write it into his Valentine's Day card, it's ready to go. When I'm looking for my mapped out week, it's here. Everything is in the planner. So it makes it really easy for me to find it. Now, um, I will show you this week and how it looks in my planner right now. I'll just flip the phone around. But this is a look into the week that was. Right now it is Friday, 9 a.m. It obviously won't be when you see this video, but I thought I would show you a real look into my planner this week and how I set it out. It is not the prettiest you will ever see. I actually don't have one sticker in here this week. My planner is used to be as functional as possible and to reduce overwhelm for me. So I use this planner to help me remember where I need to be and to set out my day so that I know that I can get through it. And I want to speak particularly about yesterday afternoon where I went to seven places within an hour and 10 minutes, one of them being a 30 minute appointment. Now, I was not rushed for any of those things. I have just got really good at using the morning, afternoon and evening sections to make sure that I grow 
group like tasks together. So yesterday I left the warehouse at, uh, I think it was quarter to three. As I left the warehouse, I stopped past the charity. So uh, I think it is St. Vincent's, Vinnie's, that's right near me. They have a drive-through drop-off and it is right around the corner from the warehouse. So I already had some things that needed to go to charity in my boot. As I left the warehouse, I put the orders in that I had packed for the day in the boot. I drove through the charity drive-through, dropped off the things that I needed to drop off there, continued on, knew that LD was on the way to the boys' school. So I stopped through LD and got the dog food that I needed to get from there. And then I went and picked up the boys from school. From there, I drove straight to my appointment which was a half an hour appointment. Once the appointment had finished, we went past the post office to drop those orders off. Just next door to the post office is Big W. And at Big W, I can refill my soda streams, which I had in the car ready to go. And then from there, we drove to mum and dad's where we dropped the boys off because last night was date night and the boys go to mum and dad. I also had their dinner ready in the car with me um, because they love the noodle cups and we don't have them at our house, but they love having them on date night. So I had them in the car ready to go to drop off with them when they went to mum and dad's. And uh, those things all happened within a small amount of time. And afterwards, I thought about how far I have come in grouping like tasks together and being as effective with my time as I can be because when I am mindful of how I group things together in my planner, it saves me time. If I had gone in and out of the house all day doing those different things, it could have taken up most of the day. And yet I ended up going to those seven places within the hour 10, I have to check the time exactly, I was not rushed. It wasn't a challenge to see how much I could achieve. It was just how the day flowed. And I had put that all in the afternoon section of my weekly planner. And I just worked through knowing that I had written down what needed to happen in order because it made sense as I did the trip around town that I would stop along the way at the different places. So let me flip the camera around and show you what this week looked like in my planner. All right, here we go. So morning, afternoon and evening sections. Right now we are in this section of the day and I, it's just after nine. I need to leave here by 20 past nine and I actually need to add something here. I want to drop off some clothes to be uh, mended fixed. I don't know if mended is a word. Uh, just around the corner from the studio, there's a lady that fixes clothes and I have a shirt and a dress that need to be fixed. So I'm going to actually do that on the way to work. Then as soon as I finish work, I'm heading to the warehouse. I'll drop off orders at the post office. Tonight is touch football and I've just scheduled dinner, but I focus on whatever part of the day we're in. And so this is what my week looked like. These are my list of three. I actually didn't get the beach walk in on Wednesday because we did something different as a family and it was so much fun. Uh, we went and picked some macadamias off macadamia trees. So I didn't technically do the beach walk, but we did have a lovely afternoon and I didn't get to do the reading in Atomic Habits that I wanted to. But most of my other list of threes are done. This one, the cry cut giveaway has to be drawn at lunchtime today and I need to catch up with emails. But this is what my week looks like this week. For myself, this is how I set it up. Uh, not for a photo, not for this video, just actually how this week looked for me. All right, I'm gonna end this video with a few hints and tips for using your weekly planner. Firstly, have a look at your three priorities for the day. Choose what's most important to you. If you're struggling to align your goals with what you do each day, then using your list of three is the perfect place to align what you set as your goals with what you do each day. Have a look at your monthly goals, have a look at what it is that you're working towards, and then decide what is one small thing you can do today to work towards that. Now for me, at the top of my list is always the family. So at times when things get busy, I commit to one of my list of three always revolving around the family. There are certainly times where I don't need to do that, uh, but at the moment, I like to just make sure that I am doing one thing to foster our relationship as a family each day. And that might be with Tim or it could be with the kids. It sounds a whole lot more intense than it is because sometimes it's just about going and playing cricket with the boys in the backyard. Other times it's about debriefing in the car on the way home from school and being really intentional about it. It might be making a 
coffee for Tim and sitting down and debriefing if communication is what we're working on. But I try and align what my goals are with what I'm doing each day. The other two things are normally things that need to be done from a typical to-do list. And I think about what I want to achieve by the end of the day and I choose what my priorities are. If one of the things on my list of three is a big task and it's gonna take a little bit of time, then I make sure that the other two are not. I try to be as realistic as possible. And so setting three big tasks in a day is probably in my case, setting myself up for failure because I'm not going to be able to complete three big tasks in a day. Smaller tasks work better for me. And it's about learning what works best for you along the way. And you'll become more confident with that. So if you feel like you're never achieving what's on your list of three, pull it back a little bit. Maybe start with one thing or two small things and build up your confidence from there. The morning, afternoon and evening sections of the planner are some of my favorite things. And like I spoke about just before, it really does help me to split up my day and to stay focused on what it is that I'm working on at that moment, not becoming overwhelmed with how much there is to achieve in a full day. So for me, until 12 o'clock, I'm only looking in the morning section of my planner and I'm trusting that when I took the five minutes to plan out my day that I scheduled in the order of things, how it would work best for me. And if I just trust then to stay in the morning section until we get to 12 o'clock and then stay in the afternoon section until we get to about five o'clock, I know that I will achieve what I set out to achieve in the day. So have a look at what you wanna do in the full day and then break it up and decide what tasks would be best to do together and would they be best in the morning, the afternoon or the evening. Now start small. Those note pages are there for whatever you like. If you like scribbling or drawing, use those pages for that. If you like to brain dump, have it next to your bed and when you wake up in the night or you're processing a whole lot of things, you feel like you need to journal something down, use your planner. Those notes and idea pages are there for whatever you need them for. There is no right or wrong answer. And like I showed, I use my weekly plan pages to write daily affirmations because that adds value to my day and that's what I need most right now. For you, you might need something completely different. So make it your mission to find what works for you. Put your planner out somewhere where you'll see it as often as possible because if you are setting the goal of using your planner as much as possible, you want to make it easy for yourself. You want to set yourself up for success. If you feel like you're going to forget, put an alarm in your phone for a little while that reminds you at whatever time you think the best time would be to spend five minutes planning out your day. Let the alarm go off and let it remind you until it becomes a habit and you no longer need that alarm. Spending five minutes just thinking about my day really does help my day flow better and those five minutes pay me back tenfold. I feel like I save so much much time in my day because I was intentional about how I set out my day and I know that all I need to do then is slowly work through my list no need to be overwhelmed and to trust that if I just do one thing at a time by the end of the day I will have achieved what I set out to achieve I hope this video has helped have a wonderful day bye